What's up, YouTube? I'm back. Sorry I had a little bit of a hiatus because I got really busy closing the newest initialized capital fund. But we're back. It's $230 million focused on the earliest possible stage, seed. And yes, the other really big thing for me is I gave myself a COVID haircut. Just got a little crazy back there. Today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this thing I found called the Stockdale Paradox. It actually affects almost every founder I've ever seen. You've got to know that you're going to succeed no matter what, but then you've got to accept reality as it is. It's easier said than done. Let's get started. Jim Stockdale was the highest ranking captured naval officer during the Vietnam War. He says, you must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. They call this the Stockdale Paradox. During Stockdale's time in the prison camp, do you know who died? It was the optimists who died. First off, you have to know you will prevail in the end. To do that, you've got to have a big enough goal, something that you would work on for 10 years and not ever get tired. That's because every startup that works ends up being a 10-year overnight success. But those 10 years or more will be walking through fire. Start with a belief that you hold so closely and so dearly that you would never walk away from it. And this is hard and incredibly rare. Most people are working on startups like they work on book reports. They could take it or leave it. Startups are not book reports. They're callings. Are you willing to work 10 years on this? Okay, hold on a second though. What about startups starting as toys? I'm glad you brought that up because my startup, Posturus, started as a toy. I, I, I thought it was cool, fun, and interesting. I loved blogging, I loved media, and it was enough to try it out and see what would happen. At Pre-Seed, I didn't ha really have a sense for what I was getting into, but I didn't need to. It was something that I thought was fun and interesting. It was a toy. By the time we raised our seed round, I started seeing what it could really be. I started seeing product market fit, and by Series A, it started feeling like destiny to me. I would have worked the rest of my life on it if I could have. That's the conviction that's necessary to get to the 10-year overnight success. Next, you need an extreme devotion to reality. If you know you'll prevail, that's good, but that's clearly not enough. Remember, the optimist died. When I was working on Posturus, my startup, we were riding high. We had just made it to top 200 website on the planet. I was feeling like this was destiny, and that's when I got hit by this second part. I didn't accept the data as true reality, especially when we stopped growing. It grew without stop for years, and then one day it flatlined. But when that happened, we didn't change course, or we didn't change course until it was too late. This is what I mean by accepting reality as it is. If you're not doing well, you need to have real discussions with you and your team, you and your co-founders, you and your team, about what you're gonna do about this situation. You can't just say, we will prevail. You have to have a plan. This is the part that I failed at, and it directly resulted in us not getting to where I wanted to go. This might be affecting you right now. You've got to accept reality as it is. Charlie Munger says, just because the full consequences haven't hit yet doesn't mean there isn't a huge problem. It's as if someone jumped out of a window on the 42nd floor. As you go by the 20th floor, you're still okay, but that doesn't mean you don't have a problem. The key thing here is that hope isn't a strategy. This is tricky because some founders intuitively know that they need to bend reality, but bending reality needs to stop at some sort of inner circle. At some level, you've got to have a real conversation with yourself and your most senior lieutenants. You've got to keep it real with them. The worst kind of lie is to lie to yourself. This doesn't help you at all, because if you can't acknowledge a problem, you can't fix it at all. When you lie to yourself, the problems become unknown unknowns. The next worst kind of lie is to lie to those closest to you, your executives and your investors, your board members. Believe it or not, it happens all the time. If you can't acknowledge it, or you can't acknowledge it with the people who you need to fix it, 
then the organization is actually completely unable to address the problem. It's flying blind. And the problem can be internal or external. You might be running out of money. Your competitors might actually be beating you. Customers are churning. Operations might be failing. Or your sales process just doesn't work. Whatever it is, you need to have an extreme devotion to the truth. If you can't even have that discussion with your team about how you together are doing, or how each part of the team might be achieving or failing their goals, well, literally that means you have no management. This is a hard thing. As managers, as founders, you have to hold yourself to account. You have to hold your team to account. Only then can you win. Let's return to Jim Stockdale, the originator of the Stockdale Paradox. He was the most senior naval officer in Hanoi. He was tortured over 30 times. He had his legs broken twice. He suffered immensely. He survived eight years spent as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. Who didn't survive that experience? Oh, that's easy, he said. The optimists. They were the ones who said, we're gonna be out by Christmas and Christmas would come and Christmas would go. Then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter and Easter would come and then Easter would go and then Thanksgiving, and then it would be Christmas again, and they died of a broken heart. This is a very important lesson. As Isaac Asimov said, the easiest way to solve a problem is to deny it exists. So this is hard. I mean, this is, whew. Warren Buffett says, if you're the CEO of Geico, you have the luxury of only focusing on reality. Big company leaders can do this no problem. But if you are creating reality, you must both bend it and be able to see it as it is. And this is why starting a company is far more difficult than becoming the CEO of an existing one. Founders have an incredibly hard job, a job that is even harder than that of being a big company CEO. CEOs at big companies just have to manage. They have to be a good study of reality. Founders, especially founding CEOs, you've got to be better than that. To bend reality, you've got to know reality. And that's a very tough line to walk. I know we can do it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.